Well, you know, Professor Penhallow said that now whoever built that tower out there not only knew astronomy, they really, really knew astronomy, and they probably used the interior room, that first floor room, as a camera obscura solar disk calendar room. You know what that is? Well, camera obscura comes from the Latin camera, meaning room, and obscura, meaning dark. In a ro small room, if you have one small hole, the image of what's outside will appear on the inside. As far as the solar disk and the calendar room, I'll explain that in a second. But first, let's, let's make this, turn this room into a camera obscura room. We'll darken all the windows, except for one small hole. And this small hole will be right here in, the, in, in this window right here, and we turn off the lights. So the image that you see projected on the interior wall of a camera obscura is pretty amazing. Not only when I show it to folks here in the, in the 2000s are they amazed, imagine how they must have reacted back in the Renaissance days and, and even earlier when they saw this image. And it happened then the same way it does now. This is a natural occurrence. But there's something else about the image that besides just the amazingness of the, the color and clarity. If the hole that you have faces the south, and this wall here is a south-facing wall, and you have a hole on the southern wall, the image of what's outside will also include the image of the sun. In other words, this is the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the sky in this is a camera obscura image. And this, is, by the way, is a projected image onto a piece of translucent paper. Uh, this is the sky. These are the trees. Uh, this is the cars going by. There goes a car on Mill Street. But right there, that bright, bright spot, this is the image of the sun, or what's called the solar disk. And as, as, as I for, move further back, you can see, there it is. It's a be beautiful round image that, that gets projected onto the interior wall. Now, on the summertime, this, uh, this solar disk uh, will, will follow... Uh, uh, the sun is much really high in the sky, and so this, the solar disk will move across, the sun moves across the sky <clears throat> really high. So the image of the sun will move across the floor uh, right here at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and work its way up. In the winter, when the sun is much lower in the sky, the solar disk works its way across the sky here, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in the middle of the year, in the uh, spring and uh, in the fall and spring, it goes across the center, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. So in other words, if the camera obscura solar disk was right here, uh, you could say, well, it's about a quarter past 11, a little before the fall equinox. It tells you the time of day and the day of the year. Well, now, if you had a sundial and the tip of the gnomon of the sundial was exactly where that hole was, then the shadow of the tip of the gnomon of the sundial follows that exact same pattern throughout the year. So a camera obscura solar disk calendar room is the same thing as a, uh, an inside-out sundial, so to speak, and the whole thing is, I'll show you with a 4x5 camera, it's just a camera. There's a lens and the back of a camera. We'll put it on the hole. There is on the ground glass the image of the sky. There's some cars going across, and there is the very, very bright solar disk. Well, now, uh, why is this important? Well, when we understand a little bit about the history of the camera obscura, it might give us a clue as to uh, who would have built the tower with a camera obscura solar disk calendar room in it.